Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we had a wonderful pleasure to taste or to select a cask at the Glendronach distillery here in the highlands of Scotland and that cask had the vintage of 1993 and uh, we switch over now to the uh, video we took that we opened the cask the first time and uh, took out a sample and uh, well Benedict was it was his first time to open a cask. No, I've well, opened a cask in, in Ireland before. In Ireland? But uh, the, the syringe uh, to take out the the whiskey was not a syringe where you put in and, and stop it with your, your finger and take it out by vacuum, mm -hmm. but it had a little closing mechanism at the bottom, but it wasn't very, what do you call it, uh, Tight. pointy at Tight. the end, so it yeah. splashed over a bit. And we had to, mm -hmm. to get a funnel. We had to get a uh, funnel, but to, uh, it's a, a sherry cask from 1993, three? Yeah. and it's uh, the cask number 662. Two. Um, yeah, that, but it's, we but it's the, not widely available outside yeah. uh, Central Europe. No. Yeah, we're gonna have the cask for our jubilee year of whiskey.de, formerly the whiskey store in Germany, and we found it in 1993. So this is the one of the jubilee casks where we celebrate our founding 25 right. years ago. Yeah, and um, we had to do uh, some red tape work up front because the cask is duty free. Yeah. So then, how much do you pay? Uh, I don't know, not yet. <laughs> it's on credit. Yet. On credit. Oh. <laughs> but, but I had to sign a form, so they will send me a fridge. <laughs> no, uh, I sent, uh, and there they said, well, this is the description of spirit and uh, the age 1993, the cast number 662, the size is 100 milliliters. So, very good that I filled it up to top because we pay for it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and this is uh, retained, original, copy one, forwarded with samples, copy two, received, copy to be returned. Uh, yeah, <laughs> IDK. Three times stamped, buried, dug out again, <laughs> <laughs> sent to the chief, so, got it back. <laughs> yeah. So Normal. I think they will bury it below big <laughs> staples of paper. So yeah, no you still got enough in there uh, from the German take? Yet, yes. Okay, so. Uh, Host got the car keys, and that's a good thing for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, this time it's it's my turn to drive, so probably I can tell a little bit uh, about the cask and where it resides. Uh, it was filled in 1993, and the Glendronach Distillery went out of production in 1995 for quite a time uh, of silence, and people in the area uh, were afraid that they won't open again. But in 2002, they opened again. They were reopened, I think, by formerly uh, Allied distillers, if I'm right. Um, then Allied Domecq. And then uh, it was bought by a consortium of uh, Billy Walker and a inter-trading company from South Africa. And they took over the running company and, well, uh, bought Ben Riak as well and the Glen Glasso distillery as it was into production as well. And then the whole distillery, sorry, <clears throat> or the whole enterprise was sold uh, to Brown Foreman, to the uh, Kentucky-based... Uh, yeah, Brown Foreman is based in Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Been to Kentucky. the headquarters. Uh, yeah, but uh, the, the, the major brand of Brown Foreman is Jack Daniel. Jack Daniel's, yeah, they're good structured. The, the American, uh, the Brown Foreman Cooperage in Louisville, Kentucky, mm -hmm. eight seconds, the cask. <laughs> uh, Jack Daniels feels like nine seconds per cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The rest goes to I don't know what they still have. They have uh, Woodford, Woodford Reserve, Reserve and yeah. Like so uh, and uh, now uh, uh, things develop very very well. Mm -hmm. They hissed the stars and stripes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have Scotland, United States, <laughs> and Britain. So like mm, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, and this cast from 1993, it uh, resided in the warehouse uh, very close to the center of the distillery for those 25 years. You would never move those casks around, they just let them quietly mature. 
and it's a dunnage warehouse, means that the bottom is loose, the typically stamped clay and uh, some gravel on it, so that's not that wet, and the, the aisles are uh, concrete floor so that you can roll the casks uh, quite comfortable, uh, but they uh, uh, have two casks on top of each other in between some, some oak uh, cantilevers so they can roll the casks off and on. And uh, yes. when they have uh, uh, hogsheads in it, they or, or barrels, they have three on top of each other. Yeah, it's quite low. Usually, you have a bit more, a bit higher dunnages. Usually, some somewhere dunnage warehouses go go even at one story higher. Yeah, I, I think uh, they have three. quite an, an angle at the roof because yeah. from time to time they have quite a lot of snow here. Mm -hmm. They're further in the center of the highlands and not at the coastline with very little snow. So, and perhaps this room on top of the yeah. casks made that Danish warehouse that high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is now a sherry cask. We don't uh, found out uh, if it's an Oloroso or a Pedro Jimenez. The old database wasn't able to deliver. So we looked in the new system and then said, well, no. And then we looked in the old system and wasn't figured in there. And then we looked at the cask. There were no marks on the cask. Um, so what do you think what it is? So I would rule out any, uh, what's it called, uh, Fino or what's it, uh, Amontillado and Manzanilla, I would rule, out, rule them all out, except the, oh, was it Manzanilla port? No. 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 I would, I would go for Oloroso or PX, but I would I would go for PX because it's it's just a bit too sweet for mm -hmm. Oloroso. It's very very fruity, but with the dried fruits you have. Yeah, it's it's dark. Dried dates it's and dried figs. Plums. Plums. So it's it's dark, settled, very mature, but there's also a bit of a bit of wood going on, bit of. Bit of a bittersweet chocolate thing going on. Yeah, there's a, a spicy note, a spicy note showing off some, some bitterness probably. And uh, I had the bitterness just when I wetted my, my lips. Um, and there is a vanilla, there's a lot of caramel in it. It was a first fill cask, mm. a lot came out of the, the staves. <laughs> Yeah, so you have no water in it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's straight. <laughs> so typically after 25 years, such a cask will, will fall down depending on the, on the climate. You have between two thirds fill to one third fill. So a gas might be 50% fill of that cask. Mm. Have you checked it when you hit the surface? No, it was mm. too heavy, mm. it was copper too heavy. Mm. Very strong, <laughs> very strong. Not just in alcohol. Yeah, the alcohol I would say just below 60, maybe 57, 58. So that capped a lot of alcohol. Cap capped a lot of alcohol, but it's it's not as aggressive as as you would expect from 60% alcohol because it's very very round. But the, the very what I said want to say with the intensity part is you yeah, have so much dried fruit, so much also. Normal fruitiness in there as well, mm. and and it keeps on going. It just keeps on going. It's there is some sweetness and this mm -hmm. vanilla sweetness, and this tends to be to be a Pedro Jimenez for the Oloroso. I would say it's it's, it's more fruity it's a bit and too less sweet, sweet for the Oloroso. A little bit too sweet. A bit too sweet for the Oloroso. I would still go with the PX, but. Mm. Mm. And for 25 years, those casts looked wonderfully fresh. So it wasn't too damp here in the, in the highlands. So at the coastline, you typically have more humidity, more mm -hmm. uh, mold, more corrosion on the, the hoops. So it would look quite, quite intact. Mm. 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 Oh, the, the flavor is intense. It's really intense. 
I like the Grand the Androna spirit. Mm. But I would say that pretty much comes from the wood. Good woody flavor. Very mature whiskey, 25 years is it's just a good number. Mm -hmm. uh, and such a cask, uh, I, I would say you, you, you won't get that bottle when it's done by 48% below 250 euros, dollars, pounds. Yeah. So, and now in that cask, from that cask, we will receive 350. <laughs> it's an awful lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> <Boah>. <laughs> Mm. Mm. It's 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 fifty thousand from the cask. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. mm. When you take it down to, I would estimate I had forty something in the glass. You you get a bit more, a bit more freshness in there. We do have a lot of dried fruit still. But there is a bit of a tropical fruit thing going on. Maybe an, a very ripe pineapple. And yeah, the aftertaste is still a bit of sweet chocolate, a bit of coffee, a bit of what spice, clover. Yeah. Mm. Clove, cloves, not clover. Clover were the, the flowers, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the spices are pretty pretty hard to translate, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anything else? Yeah, there will be a video about the distillery as yeah, well. Yeah, we will go around now so to we, do we, a little video. Yeah, and the the postils are fabulous. Yeah, they're fabulous. and uh, they have a uh, at the wash still, I think, the bigger ones outside. They have a a, a swan type. Of yes. line arm, it, it looked yes. very unfamiliar. It was mm -hmm. something really that. special. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's and the the old mill, the old mill was from eighteen well, uh, eighty. I've, I have seen old older mills. ones. Yes, <laughs> mills are always really old. I don't know why, but they keep going. Yeah, they, they keep going. You have the, you have the bearings. You have the uh, the yeah, rotors, yeah. which are cut every year, and then they're. They're ready. So they're ready. The cask iron is never going to collapse. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. the, the old Bobby mills are really good. Yeah. Then but the, I know the Bobby company does not exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no upsell sense. Built to <laughs> <laughs> They put too good. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. they they all use the Bühler. Yeah. The Bühler is the new Bobby. And the underback from the mesh tun was shiny brine. Uh, uh, brass work, copper. It was a huge underback of ca from cast iron, which I've never seen before. Typically, you have a cylinder from stainless steel, and this was three times three meters, so it was mm -hmm. really it's a, huge. It's a beautiful area, a lot of crows. There's yeah. a lot of crows out there. Yeah. It's um, called the Parliament. The parliament. They call it the parliament, not the murder here. <laughs> <laughs> so they always. It's, it's uh, not a political statement. <laughs> <laughs> they all cr are crying and they're loud. <laughs> yeah. So. so yeah, it's a beautiful area. If you ever come to uh, to Scotland and this area around here, you have to visit the Glenronach. It's a. Shall I uh, <laughs> tell the joke? Tell the joke about the crows. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, at the end, a joke. So there's a consultant coming to the big company, corporation, and he meets the CEO, and they are going through uh, the company. And uh, then the CEO asks the consultant, "What are you doing here?" And uh, the consultant says, "Well, do you see the birds up the tree?" Yeah, I see them. And then the consultant made. And all the birds flew off. That's why I'm here. Ah, very good to know. Then they went in, uh, looked at the company, and then came out. And then the CEO said, well, they're all sitting there in the tree. They came back. <laughs> <laughs> but the consultant said, not at the same place. <laughs> so with, yeah. the next, <laughs> with the next sample, we're not sitting here at the same place. <laughs> so we will be somewhere else. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come, as always. Yeah, see ya.